Popping a bubble can be a pleasant experience and it's a great stress buster. But rotating equipment like a pump would totally disagree this though. Today, I'm going to talk about this effect called cavitation, various reasons for its occurrence and 4 tips on how to control them so that you can consider applying this in your pump system. Hello everyone, this is Karthik and welcome to the pump universe. Let's jump in right away. Cavitation is the process of vapor bubble formation, then its journey towards implosion and microjet formation leading to a material erosion. Let's look at each phase in detail. The phase 1 is the formation of vapor bubble. There are two possible reasons for a liquid to transform into a vapor. First is by heating the liquid. For example, let's take the case of a water in a container. At room temperature, the water molecules in the water have lower energy and move slowly within the vessel. Whereas when the water gets heated up, its molecules absorb the heat energy and moves faster. Then about 100 degrees centigrade, the vapor bubbles form within the water that is enough to overcome the surface pressure to let the water molecules escape as vapor. The temperature that causes this to happen is known as the boiling point of a liquid. Second possible reason for vapor bubble formation is by exposing the liquid to a state of vacuum. When I say vacuum, that is any pressure less than the atmospheric pressure. For example, if the atmospheric pressure surrounding us is 1 bar absolute and our system pressure is 0 0.9 bar absolute, then our system experiences a 10% vacuum. Liquids under vacuum have significantly lower surface pressure. Hence, the liquid molecules needs less heat energy to form a bubble and escape as a vapor. That's why at certain vacuum conditions, you can even boil the water at room temperature. In a centrifugal pump, liquid spends its surface pressure energy during its travel along the way. Hence, there is a high probability of vapor bubble formation within the pump at room temperature as well. Just a note on liquid mixtures, they generally have multiple liquid components with varied boiling points. In this case, the vapor bubble happens at a point called bubble point, which is the boiling point of one of the components in the mixture. Phase 2 is where the vapor bubble deforms into a random shape while experiencing the pressure from the surrounding areas when it enters into a further high pressure region. And the final phase is where the bubble cannot hold the surrounding pressure anymore and implodes to produce a microjet. In pumps, this microjet could generate pressures up to 10,000 megapascals for some cases. That is equivalent to 1 million metric tons of force per square meter area. That's a lot of pressure to take for a pump. Hence, impellers going through the cavitation will look something like this. And there are cases even worse than this. While discussing about cavitation, we cannot ignore a phenomenon called recirculation. It is a whirlpool effect within a pump which increases the liquid temperature and hence is a catalyst for vaporization. In centrifugal pumps, it plays a major role in inducing or amplifying a cavitation. Recirculation can happen in a pump system due to three possible reasons. First is when the pump operates away from its sweet spot, which is called the best efficiency point. This flow point is where the pump yields the maximum performance and minimal recirculation. Deviating away from this point will first result in the discharge recirculation. Then deviating further away from this point will result in the suction recirculation which will impact the net positive suction head required and amplifies the cavitation. Well, that's all about the impact of the best efficiency point. Now moving on to the second reason which is the pipe system design. Shorter pipes leading to or exiting the pumps will create turbulence and thereby induces or amplifies the recirculation. Hence, a poor pipe design can amplify the recirculation. The third possible reason is related to the pump hydraulics. 
The pump impeller wind design, impeller eye, and casing volume design does influence the recirculation within the pump. Poor design can lead to a greater recirculation away from the best efficiency point, which limits the pump operating range and thereby creates a lot of headache to the pump operators. Hence, this plays a major role in low suction pressure conditions. Well, that's all for the recirculation. Now let's look at the tips to control the cavitation. Just a disclaimer on the tips. With these tips, we are trying to minimize the cavitation and not completely eradicate it from the system. Studies have shown that the cavitation will always be there in the system regardless of taking any drastic steps to eliminate them. The key is to make sure that it is not a damaging pipe that leads to catastrophic pump or system failure. Now let's look at the four tips to control the cavitation. Tip number one. Try to operate the pump around its sweet spot. There is a reason why API 610, a widely recognized standard for pumps in oil and gas service, recommends the operating point to be within 80 to 110 percentage of the sweet spot. The preferred operating range, it recommends it to be within 70 to 120 percentage of the sweet spot. Nearer the operating point, the better the performance and lesser the cavitation issues. Tip number two. Please follow the good engineering practices when it comes to the piping design. One of them is minimum suction straight length requirements. Recommendation is 10 times the suction flange diameter, but at least keep the straight length to 5 times the diameter to minimize the recirculation. Have smoother transitions when you have reduces or elbows along the way. Rougher the path for the liquid, higher the friction losses or turbulence and greater the chances for the damaging cavitation. Tip number 3. Focus on the cavitation resistant materials. Studies have shown that some materials are more resistant to cavitation erosion than the other. Invest on right materials if you feel that cavitation damage is unavoidable in your system. For example, do you know that Ferrelium 255 has much better cavitation resistance than cast carbon steel? So choose your impeller material wisely. Tip number 4. Talk to pump manufacturers and get the best pump design to meet your lower in-depth pressure requirements. Suction performance and operating window used to be inversely proportional to each other. Suction specific speed, an indicator of impeller design, greatly affects the suction performance. Increasing this value in the design yielded less inlet pressure requirements at the best efficiency point. Increasing them also comes at the cost of a reduced operating window. Hence, 11,000 US units used to be the upper limit for the suction specific speed for the pumps. But for the past few decades, computational fluid dynamics and other design and analysis improvements have been a great game changer and it has provided the necessary tools to the pump engineers to design a pump with best possible suction performance without compromising the operating window. In conclusion, I hope you have understood that cavitation is an unavoidable scenario in a pump. Hence, as engineers or anyone related to the pump operation, we must understand the severity of the applications, identify the causes and apply the necessary action to control them effectively. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and leave your comments in the comment section. And if you would like to listen to similar content from this channel, please subscribe to Pump Universe and hit the bell button for more updates. Take care. Bye-bye.